Hi everyone, my name's Jim Little. I'm CEO of a company called Storage Made Easy. We've been doing the, um, the OpenStack events for the last four or five now. And, and normally when we come up on stage, we, we demo some new feature or, or new thing that we've done in the product. But today I thought I'd take it a little bit back to basics and just briefly tell you what we do, but also show a little bit of show and tell. Um, so I'm going to try and do at the end of four or five slides some, some live demos, which is always dangerous. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So first of all, what do we do? So we're, a, we're an application. We're an enterprise file share and sync fabric application. And we facilitate access to object storage. Of course, one of those object storage that we facilitate access to is OpenStack Swift. But, but actually, we connect to probably the, the best known object storage vendors out there. And we've been connecting to them for a, for a while now. And we have live customer deployments on, on all of those. Some of them in the hundreds of thousands, some less so. And ultimately, when they deploy our solution, as well as getting the enterprise file share and sync, what they're actually buying into is user access, end user access. Not storage admin access, but, but real end user access using the object storage in the way they would normally use any normal tool. Um, and coupled with that is the governance and audit control that the product brings to the table for IT. But we don't just support object storage. We support pretty much any type of storage. So if it's behind the firewall, it could be you know, WebDAV or FTP or SharePoint. Um, it could be SIFS, NAS or SAN. Or if it's in the cloud, it could be things like Office 365, Salesforce, Basecamp, Google Drive. We, we really don't care. Um, and there's a lot more SaaS services now that you wouldn't think of as storage clouds, but which do store data, and which therefore often need governance and control. Ultimately, what we're, what we're doing is we're providing IT um, a, crop, a private corporate Dropbox, something that they can get their arms around that works with the data stores, including OpenStack, that they already have and own within their company. Not some new data store that they have to embrace to use the product. And as part of that, we do a lot of things around that governance aspect. So we we'll log file events. We'll allow them geolocation controls. We'll, we'll integrate with their BYOD, like Mobile Iron, or they can use some of the BYOD in, in our tools. And we'll provide some restrictive covenants on policies that they wish to set up for different types of users and roles. And what that sort of looks like when you deploy it is a little like this hand drawing here. So in the top right, you have a company, top left, you have a company um, on premise. They get single sign on access to our uh, control gateway. Um, they may be using, on the bottom left there, some internal storage that's mapped to that, um, which, of course, could also be OpenStack deployed behind the firewall. And then they'll get access across the firewall, perhaps, to some of the cloud storage that they also use. And they'll, maybe they've allowed remote access to mobile users. And maybe they're using our protocol gateway with either, either end users, end customers, or maybe some hardware apps that require old protocol access, such as FTP or, or WebDAV. And the control point for that sort of universe becomes our cloud control gateway, which, which provides them the information they need that they can hand off if they want to to a compliance officer. So I did tell you the slides were short. Um, and now what I'm going to try and do, God permitting, and the internet not going down, is show you, show you some demos. So, so right now, um, I've got um, 
a company that I set up. It's a demo company. It's called Austin Summit. I, I dragged some things onto the, onto the home page that are topical. So I've got um, a mechanism where I can add custom widgets, just JavaScript widgets that might be pertinent to my organization. In this case, I added an RSS feed for OpenStack and another one that was topical about OpenStack. And I added my to-do Trello board to, to remind me to do things, such as set up our stand, this speaker presentation, and of course, to attend as many summit parties as possible. The other thing I've done here is I've used the Cloud Dashboard to set up um, access to software, which is an OpenStack um, SaaS hosted service. So when to do that, all I needed to do was to go down and to add a new provider and choose software. Once I do that, I get taken to a screen that says, OK, you want to add software, enter your endpoint host, enter your, your keys, and then you know, we'll start. But in the interest of time, I already did that, and I added it. The other thing I did was I added up, I added also a backup soft layer. So it's great being able to have access to, to soft layer and to use it for the object storage on OpenStack. But what, what happens if soft layer in Dallas goes down? Then, then my users wouldn't be able to access their files. And then any shared links that they've given out to customers wouldn't work. So what I've done is I've added um, another soft layer backup, which happens to reside in Washington, um, so that everything that's placed in the, the primary soft layer OpenStack is also replicated to the backup. And if the primary happens to be down, then we'll automatically fail over and, and use the backup. And when it comes back online, we'll, we'll pair those back up again. So that's, that's one nice thing you can do. And, and actually, you don't need to do that between the same cloud provider. If you'd wanted to do that between an internal OpenStack or Ceph deployment and, and some hosted Amazon S3 deployment or, or some internal SIF share, and some external OpenStack you could have. The other thing I've done is on that soft layer Dallas, I, um, I created a container called SME Dallas. And within that, I created a shared team folder. So that shared team folder, um, I can use then to assign to users who have access to it. So I can simply go into my visual permissions manager um, and from that visual permissions manager, I can decide on which role. In this case, I have a role called Austin Summit Marketing, um, who want access to that folder. Once I've selected it, I can actually decide at a quite granular level what sort of access they, they, they can have. And, and I, can, I can actually decide, for example, all right, I want to give read download access, but I might I might want to also let them create folders. So I have quite granular control over that. And I, I can assign different permissions at a subfolder level than I can at a, at a parent folder level, which is important because when you start to use apps and tools like this, that's, obvious, that's often one glaring omission that they, that they have. They don't allow you that type of um, flexibility with regards to permissions. So now that's, that's set up, if I want to, I can start dropping files into it or create new folders. So once I've created the new folder, that new folder will be created, um, which obviously underneath the hood for those people who know OpenStack is actually an object. But notice that to an end user, it looks like a folder. So they're getting the, the normal um, file folder view that they would expect to see. They're not getting object container, you know, which to end users can be very confusing. And what I can do once I've created the folder is I can start to drop things into it. 
Um, once they're dropped in, um, obviously they're uploaded, they go to that, um, to that Dallas container, but they'll also get backed up to the Washington container. And the way that happens or is facilitated is, is by this tasks section here, which takes that, you know, happens really quickly, it backs it back up to the Washington container. So that all happens in, in real time. Um, once I have these here and I'm working on them, if I wish to, um, I can start to do things like preview them. You know, show me the document as I'm working on it in real time. And if I happen to like, if I happen not to like that hierarchical view, I can just simply, you know, change my user interface and move into a Dropbox-like view, which just gives me a flat user interface. And I also have all of the information about the file itself. Right now, we haven't done anything with the file. We haven't locked it. Um, we haven't created any shared links with it. But we could. So at the, on the file itself, if we wanted to, we could, we could share it. And we can generate a link. And we can do some things with that link. We can give it a password. We can time expire it. We can limit it, for example, to only one download. So we have some control over how and who and in what way we give access to that file. And on the actual, for those of you who have never seen the, the, the sort of soft layer interface, if we go into soft layer and we go to Dallas, which I think is that one, It's not that one. Is that Dallas? Is it this one? Then that's the the folder we just contain we created, and that's the the object that we just put in there. And notice also that you see the files and the names as the files are. We haven't done anything weird with the file names. We haven't transcoded them. We haven't changed them into something else. And again, it's important to point that out because if you look at other solutions, often they'll change the file names and they'll put some metadata into the file name because it helps them index it and find it in the future. Now that, that might be all well and good, but as soon as you do that, you're locked into that solution. Because to be able to see the files that a human can see, you have to use that tool. You can't just rip it out and say, right, great, I still have my whole hierarchy here. I can still understand you know, what it is. I can put some other tool in to read it. So we never do that. We, never, we will never change the file name unless we're dealing with versions, in which case we'll timestamp one of the versions so that you can clearly see it's a previous version and it's timestamped. The, the other neat thing you can start to do when you've got this sort of access is you don't just have to access it from the web. You can also access it from the drive. So up here, we have a little icon that lives in the taskbar. And that's actually a network drive. So it's a, a desktop network drive. I can use that desktop network drive as a user to interact with my data. And you can see a little folder just popped into that drive there called Demo Live, you know, which is the one I've just created. Now, the, the interesting thing about the drive is, is that unlike um, a Dropbox view, all you're seeing are the stubs. These files are actually not on my laptop. They'll only end up on my laptop at the point I invoke them which is great when you're dealing with object storage because you can, you can put a lot of data in object storage. So you don't want to be in a situation where you've got terabytes or petabytes of data. And to get access to it, you have to sync it back down to your desktop. That's rubbish. You know, you, 
you need an ability to be able to access that data and browse it on demand. And then if you want to get that data to, to be able to pull it down on demand. Now, we also have a separate um, part of this app that actually does do the sync piece. But it's not just the sync piece. It's a combination of the two. Because you know, we believe that when you're dealing with these, these type of big data sets, you need more than sync. You need sync plus drive. The other thing you can do is you can start to do some, some pretty neat stuff around sort of searching for files. So again, a little app that lives in the taskbar, you know, we can, we can go in and we can search for the files directly. So a bit like Spotlight, but for the cloud. And there are other apps like email plugins, so that if you want to share links directly through an email plugin, um, migration apps that allow you to move data directly into you know, something like OpenStack. And ultimately, what you've given the user is something that they're pretty used to. But from an IT perspective, everything is being logged, all the access points, something that you can go in, you know, even the previews. So even the uploads, the downloads, you share a link, it'll log the remote IP address. So, you know, when you're dealing with certain legislation, such as HIPAA, for example, where if you store files off premise and you need, if you get a compliance officer in, you need to be able to show who's had access to those files, what's happened to those files, what events. You can filter it, you can pick the right dates, you can give it to your HIPAA compliance officer. This can also be integrated at a technical level with um, syslog. So that if you happen to be a, a large enterprise and you're aggregating some of that log data and you have your own BAM dashboards, for example, then you can output this in syslog format and you can incorporate it within your BAM dashboard. And there are a lot of options for IT to be able to set. Some of them involve increasing security. Some of them involve turning things on or off. And they're grouped you know, in fairly generic ways. User governance, file sharing policy, security, encryption. Encryption is an interesting one because the product supports its own encryption. So you can set an encryption key. That encryption key is used to stream encrypt the files before they land on, on the object storage. So if the object storage is not behind your firewall, or the cloud you're using is not behind your firewall, you can be, you can be comfortable in the knowledge that actually it's secure. Because if anybody accesses that direct, they can't use it. They have to go back through the appliance, use the encryption key to get access to that file. So it's a very um, good way for companies who are using or want to embrace cloud, but have certain data that they want to make sure is encrypted, it's a great way to facilitate that. I can see that I'm almost out of time. Hopefully, this has been interesting to you. Again, my name is Jim Little. I'm the CEO of Storage Made Easy. We're on Stand Day 10. If you have any questions, by all means, drop by. Thank you.